representatives from the university, the city, businesses, and the community, among others, to keep an open dialogue about potential development and tenants at STAR Campus. I have a proven track record of building positive relationships with business and community groups to achieve extraordinary results. I am pro-business development for Newark. This project represents a great opportunity to create much needed jobs, as well as a chance to broaden the city's revenue tax base. However, we need to take into account how projects like this impact the lives of those who are in the community. And although it will not be easy, we need to show the business community that we can be creative and willing to develop collaborative business relationships that balance development and quality of life. Thank you, a Amy Will. When I first learned about Power Plant Project in June, I was uh, instantly alarmed. The plan for a power plant at the Star Campus, which is about 2,000 feet from the house I grew up in and where my dad still lives, um, that, that's a vibrant community with a lot of long-term residents. And the, the prospect of putting in a large-scale industrial operation there uh, was a concern to me. Learning about the power plant, as I have, I have a, a PhD in energy and environmental policy, and I've been putting those skills to work to do research about the project and making that information available to city council so that they can act. Uh, it, it has raised a lot of the issues that we have about the lack of accountability in our city government. So my position on the data centers is it's a it's an iconographic of some of the larger issues that we have in our city that we really need to correct to protect our quality of life. Thank you, Rebecca Powers. Building a 279 megawatt natural gas power plant in a residential area does not seem to be an appropriate project to Newark. The closest houses are a quarter of a mile away, and air pollution and noise disturbance are of utmost concerns to me, uh, particularly the NOx emissions, and particularly detrimental to children, children with asthma, people living with emphysema. I know that there are many New Yorkers looking for work looking to support their families and themselves, and I think that we can find a more appropriate project for the University of Delaware Star Campus. It's a great asset to our community, but I think that we can find a more appropriate project aligned better with the health and safety of our community. Thank you. Robert Harlan. In 2010, I was invited to a presentation at the Embassy Suites with Paul Pomeroy, who was then on City Council. <laughs> The presentation that was made at that time by the university about what they were going to do with the old Chrysler plant is not quite what is there now. It was, uh, as a former New Yorker of 45 years, it was a really big snow job. <laughs> and I I find great difficulty in dealing with what has taken place. We have all been gotten a snow job. Um, I know that we need jobs. I'm an ex-union representative from New York. It's very important to create jobs, and that's one of my goals, but I'm not sure we're going to do it with this power plant. Thank you. Matthew Vento. Power plants and universities have gone together uh, for many, many years. I was able to research that University of Minnesota was one of the first to put one on their campus in the 70s. I think what concerns us right now is the size and what it's going to be used for. We continuously talk about a lack of reporting and that's what is concerning us. We look towards Johns Hopkins University and Cornell University and Harvard Medical College who all have power plants and they are leading the way in technology. However, their plants are much smaller. So what we need to ask is why so large? Because if we are going to be the leaders of technology on the East Coast, I am all for it. 
But as of right now, all we know it is going to back up what I like to refer to as a cloud, and that is what a data center is. We have more questions. Thank you. Uh, Donald Del Palo. Thank you. Uh, I'm against putting the power plant at this location. My main reason is why all the, all the residents of Newark, the whole university, including 20 plus thousand students and the 1,300 commercial customers of the city and their thousands of employees use 1.3 gallon, billion gallons of water a year. The power plant will employ 72 employees and use over 1 billion gallons of water a year. We will be taking this water out of use for any other business for decades. United Water will be supplying the water is growing ever so close to capacity. Soon we will have to start saying no even to large employers because of lack of water. Every users of water such as power plants and refineries are always located next to large water sources, not inland, using drinking water as their water source. We cannot afford to waste one billion gallons of our water for just 72 jobs. Thank you. Microphone comes out here. State law prohibits council members and indeed the mayor from taking a position on things that are going to come in front of council for a zoning review and vote. If you state a bias before that review comes, you have to recuse yourself. It doesn't make sense, but it is the state law. So I have been working to fix the system. I work in the government. It's what I do. It's your government. That's how I work. That's how I offer my service, in that the system has a bunch of holes. One of the holes that Dr. John Morgan found was that the city manager has the ability to give a noise waiver. So what you've seen council do is go fix that hole. And we're working the system that way. I cannot tell you how I feel. What I can tell you is that this issue has split the city. With the northern parts of the city looking more at the economic issues, the nearby neighborhoods being more concerned about the air quality, water quality, and so on, and extreme noise. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, 30 seconds for rebuttal. I would just like to point out that I believe what Councilman Moorhead is referring to is the Delaware Public Integrity Commission Advisory Opinion 0742 which does apply to people in elected office now, but would not apply to those of us sitting here who are not yet in elected office and who are still private citizens. Thank you. Uh, the next round of questions will begin with Amy Rowe, and it's 